dealing with technical issues. We should be good to go now, Joe. Uh, anyway, okay. So uh, first part of that live stream, five minutes, no audio. Perfect. Uh, anyway, rolling with the punches, moving on, right? So uh, so we all are familiar with that rule of reciprocation, right? Now, the key to the rule of reciprocation is that it doesn't work if you attach conditions, right? So imagine that same situation. You're out to dinner with a friend and your friend says, I'm going to buy dinner tonight, grabs the check, says dinner's on me. And then they say, but, but only if you agree right now to buy me dinner next week. All of a sudden, it's a very different situation. It's become a transaction. It's not and you're not inclined to reciprocate, right? You're kind of like, mm, you're going to back off a little bit. That's a little bit of a weird situation, right? So I want to focus on that rule of reciprocation because it's what we use to build content, right? It's what we use as a focus to build content. We want What we want to do is basically uh, emulate what's called um, content marketing, right? And so one of, the, one of the best examples of video content marketing that I can provide you guys, um, also I'm a dog owner in case you heard those guys in the background, um, uh, one of the best examples of video content marketing I can provide you is Red Bull, right? Everybody's familiar with Red Bull, recognize this can, right? And Red Bull, whether, uh, you know, Red Bull, you recognize kind of automatically as being all about adventure sports. But if you think about it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And the reason why you associate them with adventure sports is because of videos like this that they put out, right? So we got a guy wearing a Red Bull helmet with a parachute jumping off of a hot air balloon, okay? And the reason why we associate these things, um, Red Bull with these things, and the reason why they produce this content is because they identified a value gap for their ideal audience, right? And then sought to fill that gap with content, right? So their ideal audience were people who have a low aversion to risk because Red Bull is an energy drink. When they were new on the market, that's who they had to target, right? So they targeted people with a low aversion to risk, and then they produced content and delivered it to them, right, as a gift. So another example of this kind of content marketing that we're all familiar with is the Michelin Guide. Is everybody familiar with the Michelin Guide? You've heard of a Michelin-starred restaurant, right? So how did a tire company end up being uh, the most coveted rating uh, for restaurants in the world, right? How did they end up giving the most coveted rating? Well, it's pretty simple. They had an audience that they wanted to target. People in the in the early days, you can see uh, on this edition, it was this one was released in 1900. So in the very early days of the automobile, people who were doing auto uh, auto touring, right, uh, driving around in their cars for fun, would go out. Right. And they needed a guide to tell them where was a good place to stop for lunch, where was a good place to stop for dinner, et cetera, et cetera. And so the Michelin brothers who started the tire company uh, started putting out a guide for that audience. Right. So the idea was, again, to fill that value gap for their audience. So what does this have to do with the rule of reciprocation? Well, it's very easy. They're delivering value to their ideal audience. Right. And then by branding that value to their business, they're providing their ideal audience the opportunity to return that value to them. Right. So. Legendeering, I mentioned that before, that's our proprietary strategy for how to trigger this process through content production. Right. To help you grow your audience and grow community around your brand, really. And so I put up this infographic here now so you guys can sort of see how it works. Right. So basically, we start out with a long form content video series. Um, in that video series, we focus on sort of 10 to 20 minute ish duration pieces of content, longer form content, right? We then take those that are value driven. Again, big focus on value, right? They have to be value driven for your audience without strings attached. Super important. We then take that video content series and we create short form promotional videos out of it, right? So that we can reach your audience wherever they are. We then create memes and GIFs again, so we can reach your audience wherever they are. We can also take that video series and create a podcast series out of it, right? And then you can then take that podcast series, you can transcribe it, and you can use work with a copywriter or yourself and create blog content out of it, right? So the key here is to create content and then repackage and repurpose that content to maximize your value for dollar across multiple platforms. Okay. And what this ends up creating for your audience, right? Because you're creating formatted episodic content 
is it ends up creating for your audience the opportunity to feel like you felt when you looked in the TV guide and found that your favorite show was coming on the air with new episodes. Every time you put out a new episode that drives value to your audience, they will get excited about it. Just like you did when you saw the listing for Family Ties coming back on the air with new episodes. So that's my 10 minutes. Kept it, kept it short and tight for you guys. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream now. And then we can uh, jump into some Q&A. Does that sound good to everybody? Thumbs up. That will work. Cool, cool. All right, here we go. Going to end the live stream. Goodbye to everybody watching on social media.